Feels good in here today. Man, love you guys and thank y'all for uh thank y'all for being here. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and openly confess. Sometimes it's hard to feel what God is doing back there. Um, And so, man, uh, I just want to obey God and uh, be obedient to Jesus Christ. But that's how important. A lot of of you don't understand how blessed you are to be out there. And uh, so it's it's good. It's good, man. So today what I want to do, I want to preach... Part two. Everybody say part two. Uh, the God can series. Yeah, the God can. Everybody say God can. Yeah, God, yeah it's, this side's really good this morning. What about this side? Everybody say God can. Yeah, all right. Now everybody will say God can. Now everybody say God can. Yeah, God can do whatever he wants to do. God can do whatever God wants to do. And watch this. I love this part about God. No man. No church. No human being can stop Jesus Christ. That right there is worth a big old shout by itself. Amen. Hallelujah. So the number one question I get asked all the time is, um, can God use me? Can God use me? The, the common word that a lot of people get is that um, 10% of the church is doing 90% of the work. You know, it seems like anymore that it's getting less and less and less. And uh, so, can God use you? Can God and will God use you? So if you have your Bible, really quick, what I'm going to do, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. Holy Ghost, speak today. Speak today. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 9 is where I'm going to be taking my text from. How many of y'all glad to be in God's house? Come on, half of you. The rest of y'all glad to be in God's house? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank y'all for being here. Matthew 21, verses 1 through 9. Um... Again, we're in the series, the, the God Can series. I love this. Because this is going to, this, today's sermon, <laughs> y'all might as well buckle in. Because here's the deal. Uh, we got a lot of stinking religious people. And God can't stand religious people. And because he know what God does, he'll walk into a church, into the temple, Mike, and he'll say these words, you brood of vipers. God will hurt your feelings sometimes. How many can say amen to that? Matthew 21, verses 1 through 9. Y'all hang on. You buck yourself in it's, and lean in. Give God your ears because today's going to be right and tight. As they approached Jerusalem. I love this. Listen. As they approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethlehem on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples. Everybody say two disciples. Yeah, watch this what happened. Saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And at once, watch, you will find a donkey tied there with, don't miss this part, with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. I love this, verse 3. And if the religious people say anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. Everybody say the Lord needs them. Well, Brian, I thought God was omnipotent and omniscient. He is. But God needs us. A lot of people ain't going to tell you all that. We were God's messengers here on earth. Watch what it says right here. And he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what this was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you. Watch what, watch. Gentle and riding on a donkey. And watch on a coat. The foal of a donkey. We miss this. We say, Jesus come riding in on a donkey. He come riding in on a coat. I'm going to preach good today. It's so good. I'm gonna, we're, it's going to be so good. Listen. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. Very important that you're obedient to what God says. They brought the donkey and the coat. I guarantee y'all ain't never heard, you ain't heard this sermon. He brought the donkey and the coat and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground. While others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed, they shouted... Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Be careful of the ones that will, that will shout for you. Be, be careful of the ones who always brag on you. Because I'm telling you, they'll shout on a Friday and kill you on a Sunday. On. So listen, I love this because God says, I need that donkey. Everybody say, I need that donkey. 
Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, now you remind me of a donkey. Come on, tell me somebody. Yeah, you remind me of another donkey. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you tell who the religious folks are they're going. You remind me of a donkey. I've been called worse than a donkey. Come on, somebody. He said, I don't need, watch, I told y'all this last week. He said, I don't need a stallion. I don't need a Tennessee walker. I don't need a Clydesdale. I need a donkey. I need a donkey. <laughs> and listen, I told you this last week. This was the last week. Very important to get this. The last week before Jesus died on the cross. We missed this stuff. We miss this stuff. And he said one of the most critical moments in his life. He said, I need the donkey and I need the coat. I need two things before this happens. Now listen, last week I told you donkey means, what it mean? Burden barrier. Donkey means burden barrier. Come on somebody, burden barrier. Yeah, here's what I've learned. Watch this. In 24 years of pastoring and preaching and teaching, somebody... Has to be willing to carry the burden of worship. Somebody has to have the burden. Of, of souls not being lost and dying and going to hell. Somebody has to have the burden. To get on this stage. And to worship Jesus Christ. Somebody's got to have the burden. That you say you know what. Enough is enough. I refuse anybody to die and go to hell. If you get around me. You're going to have a hard time going to hell. I got that burden on my life because I believe what I preach. I believe it. How many burden bearers are in the house today? How many of you say, Brian, I, I've just got a burden on me. Good. Because the burden's not bad. Now, worry's bad. But a burden, a burden is okay. Listen to this. I want to give you one, one more lesson. I have five. Mm. But I'm going to give you one more. Everybody say, he's taking his time. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking my time. Because number one, I've realized after 24 years of ministry, I can't get through five points. Yeah, over the years, you get wiser. Amen. Somebody say amen. So I want to give you a lesson that we can learn from another, uh, a donkey. I told y'all, y'all remind me of a donkey. Yeah, so I want this to become real to you guys. Because listen, we just look at an animal. And say, that's a donkey. God says, there, watch, there is a purpose behind everything that God does. Watch, there is a purpose for you being here today. You're not here to entertain people. You're not here for a light show. I need some burden bearers that says, you know what? I'm here and I got a burden on my heart that when I leave here, I'm going to leave different. I'm going to leave different. Listen, the kind of people that God will choose and the kind of people that God will use is found in the life of a donkey. It sure is. So here's another lesson that we can learn from the life of a donkey. What qualifies you? What qualifies you? Can you be used? It's so easy to say yes. Well, how come you're not doing anything for God? How come you got to call the preacher and the deacons and whatever to do what God's called you to do? You've got the same power. The same anointing. In your life that I've got in me. It is time for the church to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. I'm speaking to somebody today. God wants to use you, but you are refusing to be used. Last Sunday I told you the number one lesson. Number one. Number one. That you can learn from a donkey. What will qualify you to be used by God. Is great blessings come from great burdens. Watch this. If you say, I'm going to be a carrier of Jesus, you might as well get ready to carry a burden. You might as well. See, we run from trouble. God runs to it. We run from a tomb. God runs to it. You cannot separate the blessing from a burden. Somebody say amen. You can't do it. I want to be blessed. I want to be blessed. I want to be blessed. Are you willing to carry a burden? Are you willing to carry a burden? Here's another lesson, number two, and this is, this is the one I want to hone in. Help me preach Holy Ghost. Here's another lesson we can learn from the life of a donkey. Turn to your neighbor one more time and say, you still look like a donkey. You still look like a donkey. Don't y'all cuss, but you still look like a donkey. Hallelujah. And some of y'all been wanting to say that for a long time. I can just look at you. Because some people still going, you still say, you are, you are a donkey. You look like a donkey. You are a donkey. Yeah. 
So the number two, listen to this. This is so good. And this is going to put the religious people in churches uh, that they think only women can play the piano and cook in the kitchen. Bull butter. Bull, bull. Everybody say, that's a bunch of bull right there. Yeah. Number two, God calls the unqualified. I'm going to say it again. Let this get in your spirit. God calls the unqualified. Come on, somebody. God calls the unqualified. Mm -mm. I'm going to say it to y'all get this, man. Because some of you are sitting there going, well, I don't think God can use me because you think you're unqualified. When God looks at you, he looks at you what he created you to be. He qualified you when he died on the cross. His blood is more than sufficient. What he done yesterday, hallelujah, he can do today. Woo! This is going to bless somebody. This is going to help somebody here today. When I was, when I was going over this Friday in my office, I'm telling y'all, I had a great time. Because I believe this. Watch. This is going to help somebody. And this messed me up right here because this, I never have seen this before. I've never seen When I'm ready to preach to you is a new sermon. It's fresh. It's off the press. I want y'all to check this out. Luke chapter 19, verse 30. Luke 19, verse 30. Luke 19, verse 30. I want you to put it on the big screen too because this is so good. Everybody say, this is so good. The rest of you say, this is so good. Now all of you say, this is so good. Yeah, watch this. Luke 19, 30 says, Go to the village ahead of you. It's another, it's, it's Luke, brother Luke. Go to the village ahead of you. Watch this. And as you enter it, you will find a coat tied there. Notice, where did the donkey go? You say, Brian, that's a baby donkey. Okay. But there was a donkey and a coat, a donkey and a coat, a donkey and a coat. Watch this, Jason. This is so good. You'll find a coat tied there, which no one, I love this, Allison. No one, Jimmy, you're going to relate to this one, brother. No one has ever ridden, untie it, and bring it here. Untie the baby coat. It's never been ridden. Jimmy, how is it when you get on a horse that's never been ridden? It's fun, huh? I bet it is. Yeah, it's fun, all right. Uh-huh. The only ones that's fun is the ones at Walmart that's still on a little machine that goes around like that. That's the only one that's fun. Because if you get on, watch this, if you get on a coat that has never been ridden, you better hang on, Lucy. You better grab a neck. You better, you better grab an ear. You better grab something. Hang on. But why did Jesus say there's a coat? It's never been ridden. I love this, Willie. And I want you to untie it. And I want you to bring it to me. I'm going to teach y'all good today. I want to lean in and listen to me. Here's what it means when the Bible says, I love this, which no one has ever ridden. No one has ever ridden. It means this according to the Greek. It means it wasn't qualified. It means, watch this, it was wild. It means, watch this, you ready? It wasn't trained. And it wasn't, it was unqualified to be a carrier of Jesus. Here's what God just spoke to my spirit. God will take up the most messed up thing. God will take a man that says, I'm too wild for God to save. I've not been trained in vacation Bible school. I don't have the education. But God says, I will take that one. Hallelujah. And unloose it, untied, and bring it to me. Oh, somebody give God a praise right there. Come on, somebody give God a praise. Hey, hallelujah. That coat, that coat hadn't been to vacation Bible school. That coat has never been to a church service. It wasn't, watch, it wasn't qualified. It was a wild thing. Hmm, I almost went somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Y'all tempt me, but I'm not going to do it. Let me preach right here just for a moment. You know, you don't have to have everything to be a carrier of Jesus. Look at me. Come on. You don't have to have a degree. Do I think education is important? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the Bible says that, that wisdom equals power. It's important. It's important to know the word of God. But watch this. It don't qualify me. 
You don't have to have the alphabet in front of your name and behind your name. Come on, somebody, to be a carrier of God's Word. I know a lot of educated people, come on, somebody, that don't bear no fruit. All they are is a nut. They got all the alphabet. They got all the education. But they, watch this, they cold as ice. They cold as ice. And all God's looking for, I wrote this in my personal notes. And I said, Brian Rafferty, all God is looking for is somebody be, who's willing to be a carrier of God's word. To take you back to the school system. You know why people are dying and going to hell at schools? We don't have a burden. We don't have a burden for people like we, we should. Oh, we're, we got our PhDs in talking about people. What's wrong with them? What side of the tracks they were born on? Yeah. What color their skin is? I'm so glad God was not born a white man. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ was not born a black man. I'm glad that he was born a Jew. He wasn't black. And he wasn't white. But he's still the king of kings and the lord of lords. He loves all people. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm so glad. All God's looking for is people to carry his name into the school system. To the marketplace. And workplace. And listen, people don't care if you know Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. If you can know all the language. There's 6,809 known different languages in this world. You can know every one of them. But if you're not a carrier of love, if you're not a carrier of joy, if you're not a carrier of, of grace, love, and mercy, and compassion, and goodness, and kindness, and gentleness, and self-control, you can, the Bible says, you can do all you want to do. But if you don't have love, all you are is a sounding gong. And this is not the gong show. Let me tell you who God chooses. I started reading the Bible. See, we know this right here, but I'm going I'm to I'm let it at your feet again. Here's the people. Now, listen, if they probably put a resume in to be your pastor and you looked at their resume, you would probably sit there and go, ah, not this one. Let me, are y'all re ready for a word? God uses the unqualified people. Churches look at, oh, well, I know his daddy. And so because I know his daddy and his daddy was a good man, he'll be a good leader. That's a bunch of bull monarchy. That don't qualify you. Who you know and uh, it don't. Let me, let me tell y'all, this is so good. I'm ready to preach this one. Let me show, show y'all who God chooses. He chose Abraham and Abraham was a liar. He chose Noah. Noah was a drunk. Y'all can't handle this. Well, Brian, I don't know, but I'm just telling y'all, these are the people that God chooses. Now, churches choose people who carry King James and got a suit, and they're born on the right side of the tracks, and they got a good family name. And I'm telling you, I know people like it. They're the worst leaders in the world. God chooses people like Joseph. <laughs> dysfunctional family. He put the fun in dysfunctional. Yeah. Gideon. Everybody say Gideon. Oh, watch you. He chose Gideon, and Gideon was full of fear. He was full of fear. What about, what about Ruth? Yeah. She was childless, a widow, and a foreigner. He chose a woman. Well, Brian, that's Old Testament. All right, let's go to it. Y'all, I can do this. Watch. David. Oh, let's talk about the good old King David, the apple of God's eye, the man after God's own heart. Y'all ready for this one? Y'all ready for this one? David was a murderer and an adulterer. Brian Rafferty. Oh, where'd that come from? Where'd that come from? He's lost two babies. He's been in jail. Shh. He's had three speeding tickets in one month. Don't tell Be Begley. How many of y'all forgiven? <laughs> yes. I don't care if y'all forgive me or not. God forgave me. And watch this. 
Brian Rafferty is a divorced man at a Southern Baptist church. That just don't happen. But it did in Elkhorn. Why? Because y'all love me and I love you. God will use the most dysfunctional, the most people that nobody <laughs> wants to use, but God will use all. Somebody give God praise if you put the fun in dysfunctional. Somebody give God praise if you know he, that you're born again on your way to heaven and God chose you. Oh, come on, rest of you give God praise. I'm talking everybody. Everybody give God a shout in here today. I command it in the name of Jesus Christ. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Listen, here's what I know. You know who makes the best leaders? The people know where God brought them from. Y'all have no clue how many people I've been able to help who have lost children. Can I, I feel a pool right there. Let me stay there. I feel a pool. I don't even know where you're at. Let me look. Let me look. I used to be mad at God. I said, God, here I am, a pastor. And me and Dana couldn't have children. And I'm telling you, God radically healed me. I had a, my boy Blake. He turned 30 Friday. 30. And uh, I've been with Dana for 27 years, so Blake was three when I, when I met him. And, um, <laughs> and you say, Brian, you're not even his daddy. Oh, I beg differ with you, sir. Because, see, his blood's on my hands. How I raised him, I promise you, I felt the Holy Ghost. God don't have stepchildren. I've been grafted in. I'm part of the kingdom. Some of you are missing your greatest blessing because you want man's approval. I feel the Holy Ghost. You're waiting for somebody to ask you, and God done stepped out on nothing, and he told you. Well, I'm waiting for Brother Brian to call me. You've missed it. Come on, y'all. I believe this church right here, in Jesus Christ's name, is going to be a difference maker. I believe this church right here is going to change things up in South Central. I believe this church right here will accept people for who they are. I believe this people right here, we don't have a lot, but we got the Holy Ghost, and that's enough. I'm looking at people here today that will look at a messed up person. We got a van minister. Y'all look at me. We go to the projects. Huh. We got kids that'll fall asleep in church like some of you. Little boy. I remember this. Daniel Cook was the Youth pastor at this time, there was a little boy, a little boy on, in the youth. Every Wednesday night, Donna, he'd fall asleep. He'd fall asleep. He'd fall asleep. He'd fall asleep. And me and Daniel started talking. I said, Daniel, just go talk to him. Daniel, is Daniel here? Because I want, I want y'all, I'm going to prove to y'all this. He's in Casey County preaching. Imagine that. Yeah, Lord bless Daniel. May souls be saved. May lives be changed. Use that man. Shake him like a spiritual rug today. Amen. We love Daniel Cook. Daniel Cook, he said, I'm going to talk to him. And Jennifer, he went up to this little boy. He was an eighth grader. This little boy had such a bad home life. I can't believe they fall asleep. This little boy opened his mouth and he said these words. This is the safest place I know to sleep. He said, at home... I don't sleep very well. At home, there's arguments and there's things in the atmosphere. And daddy's hitting mama and mama's cussing daddy. But when I come to church, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel something on me that sets me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's who we are. I don't care if you fall asleep. I don't care if you fall out of a window. I do, just don't die. I've laid hands on you. I'll resurrect your butt. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. 
I know who we are. I know who I serve. And the most dysfunctional, the prostitutes are welcome here. And I don't like them. I hope they sit by you. Uh, oh, what I'm saying, what I'm saying. And this should make you shout. Y'all ready? We hear this all the time. God don't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Uh, God don't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. God uses the unqualified. You say, Brian, how you know? <laughs> I'm, your, I'm your preacher. So in other words, y'all lean in. I'm almost done. There's no excuse for you. Yesterday, we had a church work day. Healing Place, I want y'all to stand up. If you're with the Healing Place, stand up real quick. Go ahead, it's okay. It, Mike, stand up, you're with them. What y'all don't realize, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. We, we, we love, love, love everyone of y'all. Stay standing, stay standing. Stay standing. Sunday mornings, Sunday mornings, Mike, Mike come to me and he said, I really want to, them guys at the healing place want to come to church. But they need a ride. And I said, man, we got seven, eight vans out there. <laughs> go get a van, go pick them up. Yes. Brian, did you ask for permission? Nope. Because listen to me. What do, you, what do we got to ask about <laughs> going to get lost people? Right. What do we got to ask about going picking people up and bringing them to church? If you're asking a question, won't you drive a van? I feel bold today. I can, I can jump over a wall right now. I can outrun a horse right now in Jesus' name. Uh, so yet yesterday, can I come down there real quick? Listen, so yesterday, 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 yesterday listen to this. I, I, here's, what, here's, what here's what else I'm getting ready to do. Y'all better watch this section. So yesterday we had a church work day. We had more people from the healing place show up than Elkhorn show up. Right. Smack my hand. <laughs> so we ate biscuits and gravy. No, I didn't no pizza. We did you missed out. Oh, I missed out. I went home after that one. And so uh, anyway, is he here? You know, where's uh, where's Sean at? I'm coming over, Sean. Yo, hang on, just say. So listen to this, man. Listen to this. Listen. It's so good. I know I can't run. It's ugly. I don't care. So check this out. Sean. Sean, that's right. So check this out. Yesterday. Man, yeah. Yesterday. We, we ate breakfast. Had a devotion from Brother Cliff. And so I was walking out. And Mike Kiger said, come around, be Ralph. And so I turned around. And I come back over there. And Sean was just full of questions. He said, man, all this religious stuff and church just don't make sense to me. I said, me either. I said, God don't like religious people either. And so this, this man, he said, I used to be an atheist. You don't hear nothing. Used to be, didn't, is that what you said? That's what he, he used to be an atheist. He said, I would cuss God out. I'm telling on you. I would cuss God out on one side of my mouth. But something inside of me would bless him. On the other side. So, I, love, I can't wait to tell you all this. He said, I, what good am I to God? I, why would God choose me? Man, I've done heroin. Drugs. Are y'all okay? Y'all in a church, man, just believes in the Holy Ghost. We believe that God can set you free no matter where you're at in this house. There is hope for everybody in this place right now in Jesus Christ's name. So I didn't push Jesus down him. I said, here's the deal, dude. I said, why you won't go to hell? He said, I don't want to go to hell. I thought you was an atheist. Uh -uh. And so I said, I'm just going to say a prayer. And whatever happens, happens, man. I can't save you. I can't deliver you. But I know one that can. Hallelujah. So I just said, man, if you want this stuff, just repeat. I didn't say, you're going to die, go to hell, you're going to burn. The worm never dieth. And you're going to burn, 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 burn. I didn't do that. 
So I just said, Dear Lord. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I heard a voice say, Dear Lord. I believe in Jesus. This was an atheist. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And I'm asking you to come into my heart and save my soul. Great job, man of God. Somebody give God praise in this house. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Mm. I'm so glad God just don't use stallions. I'm glad that God uses messed up, hallelujah, dysfunctional people, people who used to be atheists. God just don't use the proper educated people. I praise God for them. But watch this. I'm so glad that God uses divorced, drug addicts, prostitutes, single people, red and yellow, black and white. God uses unqualified people. Hmm. So here's, whew, praise team, you guys come. I got to get out of here. I'll tell you what my heart rate is right now. 167. <laughs> oh. Here's, man, listen. When God called me to preach, all I had was five sermons. <laughs> and now it's been 24 years. And, and I, I didn't know a lot. I, st I, still did. I still don't. I don't know a lot. But I truly believe why Jesus uses me. Don't you listen to me? It's not because of education. <laughs> the greatest people, they still die. You know what God will use you? I feel the Holy Ghost. Because you love what He loves. He loves people. I don't like people. Well, no wonder you're not doing anything. Be careful when you say, God, whatever you want to do in my life, do it. Because God has sent you to Nineveh. God has put messed up people in your family. And I know I'm not the only one. I had five sermons. Five sermons. But the one thing that sticks in my mind is I don't want nobody dying and go to hell. A church work day on a Saturday? See, some of you are going to miss your biggest blessings being a spectator. Looking at what God's doing. Looking where God's working. Looking at the boy. And you're rejoicing. Yeah! How many souls have you led to Jesus? How are you at workplace? How are you at home when nobody's there but you and the dog? Well, when I got saved, my dog knew I got saved. I quit kicking it. My dog knew I got saved. I ain't lying. <laughs> it's so good. I know y'all looking at me like, boys are nuts, whatever. God called me, you didn't. And I love you whether you love me or not. See, I don't, I don't wait for man's approval. Mm -mm. Listen, this is the truth. Here's, in 1997... I went into the gospel ministry. I knew. I ran for a long time. I preached my first sermon when I was 14. It was ugly. But it was beautiful to Jesus. Less than five minutes. Everybody said, where'd that go? Um, 1997, a church voted on me to ordain me. I was their associate pastor. I was their youth pastor. I was on salary, but they voted no because I'm a divorced man. In my mind, Perry, I couldn't understand. Can I just be honest? Can I just be honest with you a second? I couldn't understand how God could call me, but then He put qualifications on it. But every qualification comes from man, not God. Let me tell you how, how special Elkhorn is to me. In 2001, I was y'all's youth pastor. And uh, the leadership decided, they said, Brian, 
we recognize that God's upon your life and it would be our honor to ordain you into the gospel ministry. That was 2001, 20 years ago. I want to thank God for a church that don't judge people. I want to thank God, y'all look at me, that man, if they stink, we'll hand them a bar of soap in Jesus' name. If they don't look like us, Mike, I see you over there on Wednesdays, man. Did you ever think that you would be a small group leader teaching the Word of God in a youth group? Well, I'm too old. I'm done. God, I don't like it. You tell God that. Did you ever think that God could take people to come from a bar? Greg used to sing in the honky tonks. Yeah, you. <laughs> honky tonks. Most, most of our band come from a honky tonk. And they still honky tonk. They still a donkey tonk. <laughs> so anyway, here's what I'm saying. Here's what, here's what I'm saying. Look at me. Quit judging people. Look at me. Quit judging people. What if we just started loving people for who they are? What if we just started loving people and saying, you know what, man? Listen, I know you've made some mistakes. I know that you've took a fall and a hit in your life. I know you're not the man or the woman that you want to be yet. But I'm here behind you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to push you to victory. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to carry a burden for you in your life. And if you can't carry it, I'll carry it. We got to be some burden barriers in here. Burden barriers. How many burden barriers do I have in here? Come on, how many burden barriers do I have in here this morning? So how do you know where God's going to call you? Here it is. It's so simple. Quit complicating it. Here's how you know where God will send you. Y'all ready? Here it is. Listen to me. Whatever burdens you is how God will call you. Yeah. Whatever burdens you is how God will call you. (laughs) And I'll leave you with this. I thought about this. I'm going to preach on this eventually. God's not downloaded all my heart. So there was a donkey and a coat, a donkey and a coat, a donkey and a coat, a donkey and a coat. I love this one translation. Jesus put his burden on the donkey. And he rode the coat into Jerusalem. You got to have somebody that you're tied to. That you can lay a burden on them. But you keep riding into Jerusalem. You keep riding toward the cross. You keep riding toward Jesus. You keep riding toward Calvary. Check it out. Jesus put his burdens on the donkey. And he rode the unqualified. (laughs) He rode the wow coat that had never been ridden. I almost missed this. Never been ridden. You say, all right, y'all want, y'all want to do a test really quick? Today, find a coat. And that's never been ridden. And jump on it. A double dog day. Yeah, there won't be nobody here next week. Y'all be going, oh, God. Yeah. He put his burdens on the donkey. And he rode the unqualified. I feel the Holy Spirit. He rode the unqualified coat. Never been ridden. Wild, wild, wild. And he rode the coat into Jerusalem. So what qualifies you to be used by God? Here it is. You must be willing to carry a burden. Everybody say that. You must be willing to carry a burden. Come on. You must be willing to carry a burden. And number two, you must realize that you're qualified. You got me? You are qualified to carry the Word of God. Y'all understand that? Well, Brian, I've been to jail. Me too. <clears throat> Brian, I'm divorced. Me too. Brian, I've cussed people. Me too. Brian, have you? Yeah, and you have too. We're a bunch of transformers, boy. We come into church and I'm good. <laughs> I'm here, God. I worship you, thou God. It's so true. Look at me. Be who God created you to be, warts and all. Warts and all. Be who God created you to be. 
If you're waiting for man's approval, you'll never do anything for the kingdom. If I waited on man, I would not be standing here today. So in Jesus' name, Father God, I've done what you told me to do. Thank you, God, for calling the unqualified. Thank you, God, for calling the drug addicts, the prostitutes. Yeah, that's how I pray. Thank you, God, for calling the educated, the proper. Thank you, God, for calling all people. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm talking to somebody today that needs a Savior. I'm talking, listen to me, I'm talking to somebody today. You feel that you're unqualified because of your past. You feel that you're unqualified by how your families were doing right now. Do y'all think God woke up this morning and said, man, I forgot about that one. He knows everything on your mind right now. Hey, Brian. So here's what we're going to do. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. I don't really like to, but the Lord's telling me I need to say this. What I always loved about that story in the Bible is the guy's got this colt, right? It's never been ridden. And why does he give it up? And the Lord tells him what to say. The Lord, my Lord has need. Has need. Has need of him. And the guy surrenders him. So the, that's what you're saying right now is the that's Lord has need. The Lord has need of you. Allow him to use you. Y'all hear that? Y'all believe that? that? That's the question. Do y'all believe that? All my life, he was said, God don't need you. Well, if he didn't need me, why'd he create me? God needs you on this stage. You know, I want y'all to look at me. You don't have the power or the authority to tell God that you're not qualified or you are qualified. God picks, God chooses, God, he does it all. Count it a joy to have a burden for Jesus. I know it goes totally against 21st century church, but watch this. Count it a joy that if you're burdened for lost people. If anyone asks you, why do you need the donkey and why do you need the coat? He says, tell them that I said, I need them. Y'all know what God needs this morning? Can y'all honestly God say, God needs me? Because when you can say that, you'll do something. Because then it becomes personal. It becomes personal. God needs you at work. I don't know why I'm still here. I do. God needs you at your workplace. So in Jesus Christ's name, God needs you. Tell them that I need them. I'm telling y'all today, you ready? Look at me. God needs you. Watch this. God just spoke this to me. Not because he has to, but he wants to. Ooh. Not because he, he, want, he, he, he wants to have a relationship with you. So, Father God, I'm done. I, I pray that we get this today, God. That everybody here is qualified to go to heaven. Oh, Father Everybody here is qualified to go to heaven. So, Father God, save somebody here today. God, thank you for Sean. Thank you for saving him. Thank you that he's born again, knows you as his Lord and Savior. God, thank you for saving me. God, thank you for saving us. So, Lord, have your way. This is your church. We're just blessed to worship you. I need to worship God today. I need to worship Him. So in Jesus Christ's name, I want everybody to stand to your feet. Y'all done great today. I love you so much. I love worshiping with you. But watch me. Somebody here today with a crowd of this size, you need a Savior. Look at me. Don't please. It's time to get it right with God. If you want a Savior, if you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask you as they play to walk this aisle. Come on down here. We got pastors here ready to talk with you. Give your heart to Jesus. Amen. How many of y'all know time's running out? Y'all ready? Untie the donkey. Untie the coat. God needs them.
God needs us. And we need Him. In Jesus' name, have your way, God.